Siri just turned on. What did you say, Siri? I think I said seriously. I'm not talking oh, to hey, you. Oh, hey, Siri, we're not talking to you. And I do. Oh, oh look, we got some more Siri. <laughs> Sorry, Siri. Wait a minute. Siri. Hey, Siri, we're not talking to you. <laughs> uh, All right, let's mute your butt there. Siri, you're not the guest. Oh, gosh. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Hey, you guys. Guess what? We're back with part two with the wonderful Chuck Duran of Demos That Rock. Are you ready to get into it, Chuck? Yes, I am. Here we go. We're getting buzzed. I can't have you here in the hot seat <laughs> without talking about your incredible music background. As you said, you've been in bands your whole life, mostly with Jesse, sure. right? Yeah. With Jess Harnell. Um, but your current band, Rock Sugar, is bananas great. Um, you guys came about creating this, and it was almost kind of like just a fun thing you wanted to do together, right? Yeah. But what can the fans look forward to? Because you guys came out with your first album. It was incredibly successful. Yeah. Um, if you guys look on YouTube, Rock Sugar... Don't Stop the Sandman. There's a bunch of different videos. We're Incredible gonna, mashups. We'll so, throw a link right there. Yeah. Right up there. There it is. So what um, what can fans look forward to? Because you guys have been, you know, keeping it, keeping it a little quiet for a while. So what's coming in 2020? Well, exciting things are coming <laughs> in 2020. Uh, for those of you that don't know about my band Rock Sugar, um, besides going to the link that's up there and checking it out, there are so many videos on YouTube. This is a band that was created about, what, six, seven years ago? And it was a fun project. And we created a video and it went viral on YouTube instantly. And a week later, talk about a demo getting you work. A week le later, we get a call from Paradigm Talent and said, are you guys signed? And we're like, no. They flew us out to Nashville to meet with them. Uh, we met with them, they signed us, and our first show was opening up for Aerosmith. Yeah. And then we opened up for ACDC, and then we opened up for Linkin Park, and then we opened up for Def Leppard. Not the tribute then bands we opened of these up bands, for, the real for, ones. For yeah. Kid Rock. And we became the opening act for these gigantic bands and literally yes. stadiums that were like 30, 40, 50,000 people. Um, and you'll see a bunch of that stuff on YouTube. Yeah. And so then seven years have gone past. Fans are still going crazy. Yeah. And now we're working on a new record that should be done by the end of 2019. So for 2020, mm -hmm. we anticipate the band going out and doing a summer tour. Yes. And, uh, and it's going to be so great to promote the. Oh, so it's can't wait. you're on lead guitar and great vocals. Jesse's lead singer, Jess Harner, lead singer, Mickey Caputo on bass, and Kevin Kapler on, on drums. drums. Yes. You guys are four wonderfully fantastic people. You know, just you're just. Great gentlemen, and I love the chemistry you guys have. So it's going to be very exciting. And this new this new album uh, is is really you really outdid yourself. These mashups Thank are you. really special. Yeah. I, you know, we're, and what I say to people because um, not done bragging yet <laughs> is that I mean yes you can mash up you know because you're metal and pop mashups right yeah but I think what you really hear in this second record that's coming the sophomore album is mm -hmm. your artistry that you. You are musicians. You are such good musicians and how everything's put together. So I'm very excited. Thank you, Stacey. I'm a fan. Can't that you makes me feel good. When your girl is excited <laughs> about what you do, man, you're doing something uh, good. Very proud. Uh, very proud. I love it. So, so, but really, your background as a musician really informs how you produce and direct your demos. So what is it about that experience that lets you, because your ear is Crazy trained. Uh, I think. Oh, you did you just... hear that? Like little Ozzy, crazy trained. Crazy. Oh, crazy wow. trained. I just okay. Anyway, girl, yeah. all aboard! I um, know my metal. You know your metal. <laughs> um, well, you kind of said it there, and that's that. You know the ear. Uh, I, I think that you know, even as a voice actor, if you're a voice actor and you play music um, or you sing, you have a huge advantage because you understand rhythm, you understand melody. 
and uh, an emotion. You know, songs make people feel things. Mm. Um, so the, the difference is this. Because I produce, I have producer's ears. When I'm reading, uh, uh, directing you on, a, on, a, on any given commercial, I know what it's going to sound like when it's done. I know where I want it to go. So it's so crystal clear. And same thing, by the way. Yes, yeah, so you you're go guiding the acting completely to what, because we know what the finished product is going to be. Because the voiceover is one piece; it's not the be all end it's, all. Right? Exactly, it's the one. It's one piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Right. So, anyways, being a musician, being a producer, having a really trained ear, I, I believe, really, really helps me to make smart choices when it comes to directing mm -hmm. and when it comes to looking at the final thing and how and what it should sound like. And and by the way. I do have parameters, and those parameters are what is happening in the industry right now, right. okay? Because we do not want to off-brand anything that we do. That means produce something that maybe a, a certain product or services would never do. We never want to do that. It makes us both look yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, 95% of the time, 99% of the time, when you get an audition, especially if it's a TV spot, all the visuals have already been thought out. The commercial may already even be done. So you are literally the last and missing piece of that finished puzzle. And what most people don't realize is that they need to fit mm -hmm. in something that is already done. So you can't just read the specs and go like, oh, okay, I'll just do that. Because sometimes the specs are not accurate. <laughs> Right, and sometimes you don't get the, if it's a commercial, you don't get the storyboard. You sometimes, don't get the storyboard. Sometimes you do, which sometimes is great. Sometimes you do, which is great. But sometimes but, you don't. Yes, so what I would do is how do you become that missing piece of the puzzle? The best way is to go to YouTube, go to iSpot.tv, look at that brand's commercial. If it's McDonald's, if it's Toyota, if it's whatever, look at, look at what they're doing right now and get a feel for how they like branding themselves, how they want to be perceived. Then read your specs. If it doesn't jive, the specs are not accurate. Because Toyota's not gonna change their brand overnight. Mm -hmm. They spent thousands upon thousands of dollars to brand themselves to be perceived a certain way. They're not gonna change that overnight. So. Really study what they're doing, then go in and say, well, the specs say this, but they're doing this. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give them this, but I'm also going to give them this because this is what they're doing right now. And nobody does that. Like I've seen so many people saying, well, I got this commercial for blah, 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 and I just read the specs and blah, blah, and I didn't get it. In fact, my agent said, this, I'm totally off. I don't get it. I'm like, right. did you go to their website? Did you go on YouTube? Did you find out what they're doing? Because I did. And they're like, uh, no, I didn't. Well, mm -hmm. you're completely off. Right. And that speaks to when people say to you, well, I don't watch TV or I don't listen to the radio or I don't read billboards or, or magazines. Uh, you know, it's knowing your industry. I mean, it's irresponsible. It, or if I don't know how to pronounce that. I mean, call uh, the city and, and ask somebody there how they pronounce things. I mean, you can literally, yeah. short of if you have no... The, technology. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can find a way to find what you need. And agents will tell you this. If you do not know your industry, you're not, you're not going to work in that industry as much as you would like to. And here's a perfect example. If you want to do animation, you should know what shows are being produced on each of the animation mm -hmm. networks. You should know the big shows. And you should know who, what voice actors are on are on those shows, are voicing the major characters on those shows, and what agencies they are at. If you do not know that and you want to be in animation, you don't know your industry. This is not good, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You know, And this is what I mean, what I said earlier about, about the business of the business. You yeah. need to know these things. It will make you powerful. Yes, and knowing who's writing the shows. You know, IMDb, yes. you go and you look at who the writers are, yeah. the directors are. You yeah. Know. If you ask any of the top animation people, oh, you know the show so-and-so? Yeah. Do you know who voices that? Oh, yeah. That's my friend so-and-so and blah, blah. And the producer and the director, they know everything, even if they're not on the show because mm -hmm. they know their industry. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some things that a voice actor needs that money can't buy? Oof. 
is to be themselves. Because mm. um, you can't really learn how to be yourself because you already are. Nobody can really necessarily teach you, but that is the secret sauce. It's the secret ingredient in everybody's success in today's world, okay? It was different 10 years ago, and it may be different 10 years from now, but right now, you are the missing secret ingredient. So yeah. bring you to the table. A lot of people are like, is my voice different? Do I, have, do I need a great voice? It doesn't matter. I know people that have wonderful voices that don't work. I know people that sound kind of generic that work all the time. Yeah. Because they're being them. The authenticity. Absolutely. Yeah. And the confidence. Well, the of fearlessness. course. Fearlessness. Yeah. Nobody wants to buy somebody who's scared. Yeah. Insecurity. Or yeah. Or insecurity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Can't love get it. those on Amazon. I love it. <laughs> okay. So what's your feeling about ongoing coaching and training for voiceover talent. Oh, it's, 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 it's necessary. <laughs> can, can you, I mean, like, ah. no, but, but, but it's like, you know, listen, here's what a lot of people don't realize. I pushed the button. There is a, remember I said earlier that if you treat it like a business, yes. it could pay you like no other business. Yes. Maybe a lot of people don't realize this, but I mean, I know people in this industry that are making no money. I know people in this industry that make, you know, maybe a couple hundred grand a year, which is a lot of money. But I also know people in this industry that make multiple millions every year. That's the business we're talking about. It's huge, right? So why wouldn't you do your due diligence to take advantage of your industry's full potential? Yeah. I don't know anybody in any other industry in this entire universe that does not practice or continue to learn their craft. If you're a race car driver and you're not constantly racing and training, you will not win a race. Yeah. Just because you know how to race does not mean that you're going to stay competitive race after race because somebody is out there who's hungrier, who's learning more, who's yeah. coaching more, who's really listening to those spots on TV and figuring out what those new trends that are coming, that's where you're going to see them first. You're not going to see them, you know, out in the street. You hear them on TV. They're there for the taking, for free. Yeah. And listen, not all voice demographics or textures and tones are trending. And sometimes you have that dip in your booking ratio, you're dipping, you know, you're not on trend. Yep. So those are the times that you say, okay, do I pack it in or do I use this time to work on my craft, maybe learn some different styles and, and, and see if I can get in the trend. But um, but you're not just saying, well, I guess that's it, or, or, or sitting around waiting. Yeah. You're being proactive. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, that's almost, I know this is silly, but it's almost like saying, well, geez, you know, I, 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 I'm, I, I, was, I was from the 70s, and I've always dressed like this, like from the 70s, so just because new styles come in, I just, I don't know, I don't think I can change my, my style. We're not talking about changing who you are and your beliefs. Right. You know what I mean? It's just changing an outfit. You know, is learning how to do something differently. And people do that all the time. You change your bed, you change your home, you <laughs> renovate your kitchen, you know yeah. what I mean? To make it look a little bit more modern. Uh, renovate your style of reading, you know, according to what's in demand. Yeah. And you will work more. And the other thing is this, and, 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 and I hate it when people say this, but I go, well, you know, the announcer voice is dead. It's not. Mm -mm. I hear the announcer voice on radio and I hear it on TV all the time. Maybe it's not quite as popular as it used to be. Yes, that is true, but it is not dead. So if you do have that announcer voice and you learn how to also manipulate it to sound more conversational, you will book more. Mm -hmm. I've seen people do it yeah. time and time again, even today. Yeah, yeah. What are some uh, survival jobs you've had, oh. Chuck? <laughs> Before you were... Oh. Rake it in the demo. Oh, this is a good one. You guys are gonna laugh. <laughs> These are <laughs> this is a this is a good one. Okay, some survival jobs yes. that I've had. We're gonna have a little fun, but some more, some more, some more <laughs> stuff's coming. Okay, hold on. So I 
worked at a place called the King of Solid Oak. Yeah. I don't even know if they exist anymore, <laughs> but because I, I like the name, it said the King of Solid Oak. I'm like, oh, Solid hey man, maybe all of us used to right? work there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I I worked at, at an oak furniture place. Yeah. I delivered business cards. Because mm, um, that is important. Oh, my goodness <laughs> gracious. That was crazy. I uh, I delivered um, uh, appliances. Yes. Um, that was actually fun because we delivered appliances to like a lot of, you know, celebrities in Beverly Hills, which is the only reason why I did that job. Yes. So I wanted to meet Dolly Parton. Uh, <laughs> True or false, did you ever leave, uh, forget to bring an appliance somewhere? Oh my gosh. My <laughs> boss at the appliance store would, I would come in, he goes, where's the other refrigerator? And I'm like, what refrigerator? He goes, you're supposed to pick up five and you only get brought back four. I'm like, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see it. How can you forget a refrigerator? You got five fingers in this hand, five fingers in this hand. How can you forget the refrigerator? I'm like, what does fingers have to do with anything? <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, I did that so yeah. many times. Okay, and then I, I, you have to tell, did you ever apply for any fast food jobs, Chuck? <laughs> yeah, my first job ever, I came, I was walking by and I see a sign at McDonald's and it said, help wanted. I'm like, hey, I could use some extra cash, right? I'm like 13 years old. Who? Can... So I walked in and I go up to the manager. And I said, yeah, I'm inquiring about the job. And he goes, oh, that's wonderful. Here's the application. Go sit over there and fill it out. I was like, fantastic. Filled it out, um, got back to him, and I said, here you go. And he goes, blah, 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 hmm, fantastic. When can you start? And I said, I can start Monday. And he goes, great. When you show up Monday, make sure your hair is uh, above the collar, cut above the collar. And I'm like, what? It's like, forget it. And I just ran out of there. So, yeah, that was, you know, back in those because days. Because you did not want to change who you are, Chuck. I didn't want to change who I was. I didn't your want to hair. renovate my head. So, I was born in the wrong the wrong time, but the good times. You've always beat your own job. Yeah. So <laughs> what about those compilation demos, Chuck? Compilation demos. With different genres on them. Yes? <laughs> no? No. <laughs> um, this is not good. By compilation demos, Stacey's talking about having multiple genres, different genres. For example, animation, commercial, promo, and narration on the same demo. Um, it, it's a huge no-no. And the main reason is this. It's not because, you know, oh, the agents don't want that. It's not that. It's because when you are in, say, uh, you, you want to buy a new car. Maybe you want a Toyota. That's what you want. You don't want to look at Chevys. You don't want to look at anything else. You want a Toyota. And you go to the Toyota dealer, and all you see are Hondas. It's a big waste of time, right? Yeah. Same thing here. A promo agent and a, a, a commercial agent don't work the same industry. It's a completely different industry. So you want promos to be only promos. You want commercials to be only commercials. And also, I see a lot of people that will put together animation and video games together in the same demo. Again, completely mm. different industry that people that produced animation aren't the same people that produce those video games that we see out there. So don't waste either of their times by letting them hear things that they don't need to hear. If they ask you for something like that, like there's been times when a video game uh, producer or casting director might say, hey, do you have an animation demo as well? Because right. I'm looking for more exaggerated type character voices. And you can say, absolutely, here it is. Um, but as a general note, only put one genre per demo. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, so you've had a lot of success stories from clients who came to you as complete newcomers. Yeah. People somewhere in the middle and even industry pros who said, I need to reinvent. I want to or try something completely different. What is it about your process that you think is so effective for talent at every stage? Well, my biggest success story is right there. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Uh, Thank you. You always have my heart, and I swear it's like every day I think about you know. Just you gave how, me my first job. Well, and I and I did it for the right reasons, though. Right? I earned it. Yeah. By the way, you did. No, but it. you were producing tons of commercials, yeah. and I met you after you did my demo, and yeah. you said, "Oh, I'm going to give her a 
a chance before I had absolutely. a representation. So absolutely. I um, I think I'm still paying you I your percentage, aren't I? am very happy that that happened. Me yes. too. Um, for many reasons. Uh, but Thank you. <laughs> you're very welcome. So what I think, um, and gosh, without sounding like, you know, uh, braggy, um, when somebody, and, and we kind of hit on this a little bit earlier, but somebody comes to me and they're a beginner, uh, again, my focus is, is what, what do they want? You know, what are they ready for? What stage of the business are they at that we can do something to actually get them to that next level? Because mm -hmm. everything in voiceover really is that next level. You know, you don't just go from here to here. You, you go in levels and somebody who's been in the industry for a long time and and uh, and maybe just wants to take it to that next level. Um, uh, and, and what does that mean? Maybe more jobs, maybe different jobs, maybe a different genre. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, a voiceover altogether. Um, I, I feel that my. My strength that I bring to the table when it comes to that is that I pay attention to what their needs are. You know, I don't just do things blindly. Again, I know my industry. Well, and you you treat everyone as the individual that they are. Absolutely. You don't just go, this is my template that you have to fit in. You make your yeah. process mold to what their needs are. Absolutely. Because we all have different Absolutely. needs. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, so much so that in almost every demo that I produce, and that we produce, 90% mm. um, of the spots on that demo are products and services that that person actually cares about or actually uses or actually has a connection to. Yeah. And that's not a cheat, but that's just, it helps them bring that authenticity to the read because they already love the product or they use it. Yeah. So it's easy for them to talk about it. Um, None of it is by mistake. Everything that we do has a specific intent to get that person to the next yeah. level. And I, I believe that because I, I'm focused about that and care so much about what they get out of it, that it just, that becomes the goal, my goal. My goal is your goal. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why it's strength. Mm -hmm. Your theme song is Dreamweaver. <laughs> Oh, dream weaver. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, more than three decades, you've produced thousands of demos for thousands of people all over the world, not just in the U.S. So what is it about this work that still brings you joy? Because you so love it. I mean, it's not it's not a put-on. You really do love it. Yeah. Um, gosh, I kind of got a little misty there for two seconds. Uh, can you zoom into my eyes to see the tears? Ratings, ratings. No. I told you I would get um, it. No, 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 no. Because because I'm really passionate about about what I do. Um, I love. I have to say, I love my life. I love every portion of my life. Uh, I love you in my life. Um, I love my friends. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's in our circle is somebody that we truly have a feeling for, you know, including our camera guy, Frank, Frank who's sitting over there with a big smile right now. We love our Frank. Everybody that works around us are people that we genuinely love and care about. Our chosen and family. Yeah. Our life is so much about caring and giving that that's what drives me because when I come here every day, I know that I'm gonna to talk to somebody or meet with somebody that I'm going to be able to do something to help them get what they want. And I swear, it sounds dorky and, 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 and cheesy, but it is the honest to God truth that, that, that it makes me happy. Wow. When I leave here every day, I'm like, wow, what happened with so-and-so or that email that I got or this person made that happen or you know this person, you know, they cried when they were telling me about this thing that they were telling me about because their emotions got the best of them. And, and, it's, and, and it just becomes people helping people and yeah. sharing love for one another. Well, you do it beautifully, my friend. Thank you. Um, your work ethic really is unmatched. I mean, and you do it with cheer and joy it's not oh look how hard there's no drama but have you always been a hard worker always yeah 
Always, ever since I was a little kid. I, so, I mean, you were born in Cuba. Well, yeah, I was born in Cuba. Uh, you know, our family got basically thrown out of Cuba yeah. when I was three uh, because of something my brother had done that, you know, <laughs> literally they said either he goes to prison for the rest of his life at 13 then, um, or you leave the country with nothing other than one suitcase and some clothes. So my family came uh, to United States, Florida. So I grew up in Florida since I was three. And, you know, growing up as immigrants in this country, uh, you know, nothing was handed to us. You know, it's like, I didn't come from a rich family. In fact, I came from, you know, a, a family of being here with nothing. And if we didn't have some family that you know, that gave, took hand, you in, gave yeah. us, yeah, took us in and, and, you know, and, but I remember that even when I went to, uh, uh, to kindergarten and my teacher said, um, you are now living in the United States of America and in America, we speak English. And I said, English? And she said, yes, <laughs> English. And by the way, she told me this in Spanish. That was my first language. Yes. But and I you say, are bilingual, which you always say. Like, I am bilingual. Oh, I speak a little bit, but you are fluent. I am very 100% fluent. One hundred percent fluent. That was yes. your first language, yes. Totally. Uh, so I said English, and then I went home, and I literally <laughs> would not speak Spanish again for eighteen years. Uh. No lie. So because I told my family, we are in America now, and in America we speak English, <laughs> um, and so I was really passionate about you know just being. The American dream, you know? Yeah. And so growing up and having these odd jobs and everything that I did always always pushed me towards doing something for myself yes. and being an entrepreneur. Yes. So I always took owning your own business really serious. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Everything that I ever did that was my own thing, whether it was being a musician, whether it was... Um, uh, you forgot the rebuilding Volkswagens. Yeah, I, you had a great I, business yes, doing that. I used to rebuild and renovate like old VW bugs, and that was my own business, and I was really successful at it. But the bottom line is this: every business that I did, that I put time into, I believe I had success in that business simply because I knew that I had to treat it like a business. Mm -hmm. I knew that I had to put a lot of a lot in to get something out. Yeah. And a lot of people in today's world are like, oh, well, you know, I'll give it a little bit and see what happens. That's not the way yeah. it works. I don't I care what business you're in. I tried it for a couple in. months. It didn't work. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's not going to work that way. Yeah. You got to put in hard work and, 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 and go through ups and go through downs and maybe way more downs than ups until you finally get to a lot of ups, you yeah. know, and that yeah. should be a part of the love of what you're doing. You should love that because that is a part of the process. That is part of it. I mean, so how would you define success for yourself? Whew. I mean, because you can say, oh, I'm successful. And, and you believe you're successful, but what does that mean for you? Because it doesn't always mean the same thing for the world. Gosh, I, I mean, to me, it, it just means that, that I'm happy, mm -hmm. that I'm happy. I'm happy with who I am, what I am. I'm happy that I don't rob people. Uh, to make a living, you know, uh, that I don't guide them to a place where they're going to crash and burn. You know, I'm happy that I wake up in the morning and I, and I have people in my life that I love and that love me back. I have amazing friends. I have the best, amazing, most beautiful woman <laughs> in, the, in the entire universe. My family, uh, everything. There's nothing in my life that is not good. And, and, and I think that that's partly because I took steps to make sure that that happened. It was important to me. Yeah. What is something that most people don't know about you? Hmm. I think that the, the one thing that most people wouldn't know about me or would surprise them about me is that I am, I'm a homebody. Um, and, uh, and I just love being at home. I, I, I watch, <laughs> Lifetime movies, Hallmark um, movies. I, Hallmark movies. Um, uh, Christmas time, man. I, I I'm all about the holidays, and and I just and I cry <laughs> on these movies too. I'm like, oh my god, this is my It is. It's like a. It's like a. It's like yeah, a contest. Did it get you yet? It, it would have to be first? that. I mean, people would think like, oh, he probably likes those, you know, rock and roll movies, like you know, Motley Crue concerts, and I do. But the thing that people don't know is that I'm hmm. very touched with my other side. <laughs>
<laughs> my simpler, I softer love it. side. I love it. Yeah. Um, well, Chuck, this is a joy. Um, obviously, I have a front row seat to your life, but I think, um, you know, it's always wonderful to sit opposite someone that you that you adore and respect and admire and to hear, you know, th- your journey is is such an incredible one and one that is not a fluke. It's not luck. You really showed up everywhere you had to and in times when it wasn't easy. And um, so I'm really hoping that people like getting a little inside look into the man, the myth, Chuck Duran. Uh, uh, so thank you. Oh my God. You this feel is... comfortable now? Should we start rolling? That was a good rehearsal, that right? That was a good rehearsal. Okay, yeah. we'll start rolling now. Yeah, no, I mean, again. Was it fun? It was a blast and a half, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I've never, I, it, it's really weird because you know Stacy and I are, interviewing people all the time and I'm so comfortable doing that you know because yeah. I'm not the one like talking or yeah. in the chair and when she said we, we should do this uh, I want to do this it's time and I'm like really because and then I said well if we're doing I don't want to know the questions then I want to I yeah. want to just be yeah you know real and 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 give you answers that come from you know my heart uh, as opposed to something that's been, you know, practice or, yeah. or anything like and that. And you also didn't want to make it sound like you were bragging. So and that's um, the main and, thing. And that's the main. So. Th- the reason why we haven't Veal Bells Weekly has been around for how long now? Six, since January 2012. Since yeah. January 2012. The biggest reason why I never wanted to do this little thing here is because I didn't want to brag. I don't want to brag about myself. I don't. Yeah. I don't want people to think, "Oh, that Chuck Duran, he's bragging." And it's like, and that's never my intention. But now it's time, you know. And it's yeah. not that I'm bragging. I'm just getting the information out there. I want people to know who I am, what I do, and they, I want them to know that my priority, above and beyond everything else, is you. Yeah. And and that's where everything stems from. Well, guess what? Confidence and arrogance are two different things. Yeah, baby. And you nailed it. I Thank love you. you. I love you. Thank you guys for getting buzzed with us. And uh, demosthatrock.com, Chuck Duran. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hey, everybody. Chuck Duran here of Demos That Rock. And this is really weird, but I just got buzzed by VO Buzz Weekly and Stacy. Okay. What? Yeah, I did. I buzzed him. I buzzed him so hard. And you nailed it. Yes! Yeah! Ha! Take care, everybody. Come on, come on, come on and get with us. The Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little bug.